celebrations underway in Qatar as the Gulf country kicks off the Arab Cup football tournament, just one year before hosting the highly anticipated FIFA World Cup 2022. This World Cup next year, not only the best ever, but also a truly unique event which goes beyond the sporting side, but which will also touch the social part of our world for, for the first time, a World Cup in an Arab country, for the first time, a World Cup in uh, the Gulf, in the Middle East, where the world can come and unite and see that uh, we maybe should start when we speak about ending discrimination. But celebrations aside, Qatar's bid to host the World Cup next year is overshadowed by heavy criticism over the country's human rights record, specifically concerning the state's anti-homosexuality laws and the working conditions of its migrant workers. And while some reforms have already been implemented, officials admit the situation is a work in progress. Meanwhile, fans are excited about this week's event. I'm happy about FIFA's approval of the Arab Cup since we are participating with Arab national teams in one place with experienced teams like Morocco, Algeria and Egypt. Lots of their players are playing in European Champions League. Playing with them is important for the Saudi team's future on the international or Asian stages. A total of 16 teams divided into four groups will fight for the trophy. But while the rivalry between teams is fierce, some countries are only sending the second teams, while some football stars are missing due to commitments to their professional clubs. If the tournament has been recognized, it's just to appease Arab teams. Egypt is the only team that will send their first team. Most other countries are sending their second team, and we aren't even sending our professional players. And neither is anyone else. Most countries are sending the junior team or their second team. Lack of stars, there is still some interest in the tournament. How much interest, though, will only become clear as the games progress.